Blake Griffin, officially a part of the Detroit Pistons. Obviously, heading into the trade deadline, I was assuming that the Clippers would firstly look to trade DeAndre Jordan. And then I was reminded, Jerry West has shown that he's a guy that takes a lot of risk. He took Kobe Bryant. He got Shaq to LA. He helped transform the Golden State Warriors, Stephen Curry, Klay Thompson, and Draymond Green. All three of them he drafted. All I'm saying is Jerry West knows what he's doing. The first thing he did when he went to the Clippers was he signed Blake Griffin. A five-year deal. And now look at him. Traded him off to the Detroit Pistons. And the thing is, he actually got some really good value. Because let's be honest here, if you're in the Western Conference, you're not going to win a championship. It doesn't really matter how well he plays or how poorly he plays. Because when you're a part of the Los Angeles Clippers, you're not really going to do that well. In the Western Conference I'm talking about. Just simply because you have Golden State in your conference, you have the Spurs in your conference, you have the Rockets in your conference, and even the Thunder have stepped it up in the same conference. And whilst the Clippers were solid, let's be honest, they weren't going to win a championship. And now the Clippers have a time to build around some young pieces, and while they're not super, super young, like rookie level young, Avery Bradley is still reasonably young. He actually has a lot of value. I mean, even the Oklahoma City Thunder, after losing Roberson, imagine if they could acquire someone like Avery Bradley for the future. It doesn't have to be in the near future, but maybe next season, if they can somehow maintain their core of Westbrook, Mello, and Paul George along with Steven Adams, Avery Bradley would slot right into that shooting guard. He's a really, he's an awesome defender, we all know that. And he can hit the three-point shot and the mid-range shot, unlike Roberson. And then as for the Clippers, they get Tobias Harris. He, he actually does remind me of a really poor man's uh, Carmelo Anthony for some reason. Every time I watch him, I don't know why, but he just does. It's not even the way he plays. It's simply just his shot. I don't know why. But Tobias Harris, he is a de he's a good player. He's a solid player for, well, now the Los Angeles Clippers. They also got Bovar Marjanovic, which means that DeAndre Jordan is more expandable. They don't have to keep him. And... Well, he does actually have a lot of value in the market at this point. Because with this trade, now it's the Eastern Conference that has taken a hit. And a hit in a good direction, in my opinion. Because now the Pistons are the Pelicans version in the Eastern Conference. You've got a really nice front court of Drummond and Blake Griffin. Just like the Pelicans had DeMarcus Cousins and Anthony Davis. Shout out to DeMarcus Cousins. I wish him all the best. But you feel what I'm saying? You've got a poor man's Pelicans front court because obviously Davis and DeMarcus are probably two of the best big men in the game, in my opinion. And now you've got the Pistons with Blake Griffin and Drummond, which they're not two of the best, but they're really solid players. Borderline all-star, in my opinion, because you've still got Reggie Jackson who can do things here and there. Stanley Johnson is one of those guys which... He has to really prove what he can do in the NBA because he's still pretty young, but he looks solid on defense. And then Luke Kennard seems like he has a really nice jump shot. He can shoot the three and the mid range. So honestly, they're actually a little bit younger than a lot of people expect them to be now. I mean, Stanley Johnson's really young. Luke Kennard's really young. But then you still got, well, Reggie Jackson, Blake Griffin, Andre Drummond, who are not young, but they are really capable of transforming this Pistons team into a contending team in the Eastern Conference. Because when you think about it, what's the one thing that Boston struggles with? Their big man position. They only really have Al Horford, who's not a huge defender. He has been in the past, but at the moment, at the power forward position, they don't really have anyone that is super, super impressive to pair up against Blake Griffin. Like, Blake Griffin is borderline all-star, capable of once a couple of years ago, being an MVP discussion. I remember a couple of years ago, he came third, I think, in the MVP race. Like, Blake Griffin has proven in the past that he has been a very solid player. And despite it not being recently, he can transform himself back into the past Blake Griffin if he can stay healthy. But yeah, like I said, the Celtics, they're going to have trouble against Drummond and Blake Griffin. Miami's going to have trouble against 
Blake Griffin and Andre Drummond. I mean, we have Whiteside, but he's not incredible on defense. Yeah, he can block a couple of shots here and there, but that doesn't make you a great defender. Trust me, I'm a Heat fan. Whiteside has improved, but he still needs to work on that part of his game. And even so, if we want to have a guy to pair up against Blake Griffin, now we're going to get the rookie Bam out of bio in there. He's alright, but he is still a rookie, and a rookie can't always handle a guy like Blake Griffin, especially in the playoffs. Then, the Cleveland Cavaliers, well, you've got Tristan Thompson, but apart from that, that's going to be a tough matchup for anyone in the Cleveland Cavaliers going up against Blake Griffin. It's not really like you can put Jay Crowder on Blake Griffin at this point, so maybe they're going to go after a guy like DeAndre Jordan now. It's going to be an interesting situation to see how the Eastern Conference teams match up against the Detroit Pistons because, well, like I said, it's a very nice front court. It's not very well expected, but it's something that could actually work, especially when Reggie Jackson comes back. So let me know down below what you think about the trade. Who wins, who loses? In my opinion, it's just great for the Clippers to rebuild at this point. It's not like they're going to win a championship anyway. They might as well get a first round pick, which they did. Get some trade assets. Because now they have DeAndre Jordan on the trade block. Lou Williams on the trade block. And he has shown that he can be balling. Especially this year. You've got Tobias Harris. You've got Avery Bradley. Like, those are four guys that, well, it's a decent team when you fit them in. It's not a championship level team, but it's a decent team that can make the playoffs. And if they don't want to make the playoffs, well, they are expendable and they can be traded. And teams will actually look to trade for them. And for the Clippers, they can acquire some more first round picks. So like I said, it's good for the Clippers. They can rebuild, start fresh, which they haven't been able to do for the past couple of years with Chris Paul, DeAndre, Blake Griffin, etc. And as for the Pistons, well, you've got an interesting dynamic with the front court. You've still got Reggie Jackson there coming back from injury. Stanley Johnson, Luke Kennard, two young guys. Hopefully they can step it up a little bit and make the Pistons a playoff team and cause some trouble in the playoffs if they do make it. But if you guys enjoyed the video, let me know your thoughts down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new for NBA content. And I'll catch you guys in my next video. Yeah, see you guys there. Peace.